This video is titled, Fun with Photons, or Do You Dig Light? By me, who is not an S expert. I do know some things, just not everything. Even less about this subject. So, as I was reviewing the comments for the last three videos, it became very clear to me that I really didn't know what light was about. I thought I did, but I apparently do not. What I was taught in school apparently doesn't apply today, um, because what applies today is a different, or I don't know if it's a different science, maybe a different perspective on reality. I'm not rightly sure. All I do know is that we have one very smart individual, one that I have a great deal of respect and admiration for because this individual has taken the time to actually get a PhD. I don't know how many of us out there, I don't, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of study and a lot of dedication to um, a lifetime commitment, particularly in the area of mathematics. So this individual who does teach sent me something, and I want to read it to you very quickly, because this concerns light. And I quote, Light is an electromagnetic wave and therefore does not require a medium to travel in, like a sand sound wave or a water wave would require. So this means that light travels inside Earth's atmosphere just as well as in space. If this was not the case, we would see the stars within the atmosphere either because the light has to get from the source, such as a star, very far away before it enters the Earth's atmosphere. I mean, you know, some of this just doesn't make any sense at all. I just have to tell you, when you look at this, you just go, okay, this is science. And this is all becomes because we're debating the question, why is it we cannot see stars from any of the space shots. And listen, when Neil Armstrong said he never saw any stars between here and the moon, I just find that incredible. I mean, I really do. And then to have NASA say, well, you know, you may see them sometimes and you may not see them sometimes. And then, and then we get the whole issue that the Earth is spinning on its axis at 1,040 miles an hour. We are moving at a rotational speed of 67,000 miles an hour. It means that the sun is traveling, I believe, nearly 450,000 miles an hour. And someone said, well, with all that spinning, you know, of course you're not going to see any stars out in space. Really? You really believe that? I don't. Because the whole thing doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. And you have to ask yourself, well, then what does science say? And actually, science says a lot. So, this is, in the laboratory, what a photon looks like. Now, we're talking about light. Okay, so let's continue. The only thing that can interfere with light from stars being detected by a camera is if the sun is shining directly at the camera because then the sun's brightness overwhelms the camera's ability to pick up lesser, brighter objects. If the camera turns away from the sun so that the sun is no longer in the picture, then the light from the stars should be detected. It is impossible for them not to be detected. So let's go and check and see what the science says about light. Photons. What is light? Well, light is a form of electromagnetic 
radiation. Imagine that, folks. It all comes back to electromagnetic properties. Light is made up of waves of tiny bundles of energy called photons. Here's an actual picture of one. CERN, what do you think that they're doing down there? They're using beams of light at an intensity beyond our comprehension. Intensity millions times greater than the sun. And there is, well, I would encourage you to go to CERN's YouTube channel. If you really want to have an understanding of what they're doing down there, it is a mind-blowing uh, journey. And these people are really smart. These physicists that have been working on these equations and the mystery of what is light. How do you see light? How is light measured? They've done a great deal of work on this. In fact, there's a whole theory to photons by Einstein. I didn't know this. It's called the photoelectric effect. And Einstein argued that when an oscillating body emits light, that body's energy must decrease in energy by the amount of that light. Kind of makes it kind of weird when you start figuring about the sun, doesn't it? So, as I said, this has been a science for a long time. Dawn of time. This is how, and what I don't understand, so we can look at light with Hubble, with the uh, telescopes that are out there looking into deep space. And they tell us that they can tell the age of the universe because of the light. And in this case, light that's 14 billion years old. Hmm. So, then how would that matter if you could see it if, let's say, the space shuttle was on the backside of the Earth with a camera facing out into dark space? It should be filled with stars. That's the point. And it's not. But let's continue on. So this is a computer rendition of what a photon looks like. They don't stop, folks. If you're telling me a photon can be measured back to 14 billion light years ago, and you're telling me that I can't get a simple shot from a spacecraft showing me the stars? Again, the math. Let's take a look at the math. This is where math is going to save our lives. Let's continue. More math. So, I mean, they've got this down to a science. No pun intended. But they really do. And I mean, here's Einstein's equation right here. Someone tried to tell me that light travels differently at a different rate between what's in the Earth's atmosphere and what's in a vacuum. Really? Okay. Although, that doesn't work out either. As you can see, right here is the equation. All right, so how atoms emit from photons? Well, there we go. Collision comes in with a particle, excites the atom. The old atom starts to get excited to the electron because now the electrons are bunching to the higher energy level. Oh, the electrons falling back, and whoa, girl, we got light. Uh-huh, there we go. And that's what we see. And man, this light, it's just not light to us. It's a light that's beyond us. So we talk about the particle to the photon. There we go. It says, if you look at light with a photon detector, then we can see a particle. If you don't detect it, it acts like a wave. Can you imagine it's all this wave theory? I'm telling you, you have to apply what is being said here and what we see up there. Let's continue.
Waves and photons. Now we can get the math. Is light a wave? Yes. Is light a particle? Yes. All light travels at the same speed. And it's just a matter of whether or not it's a heavy particle or a light particle as to what the light spectrum is. So here's a photoelectric camera. And this is how it's done. It's how we get cameras, folks. Listen, I've got camera shots I have done of the sun where I actually have stars coming out from behind the star field. Now, that's for another discussion because this is all related. So again, photon, particles, and waves. You see this? It all works. So you would be able to see stars everywhere. What, I mean, it's just ridiculous. So now we got the atom, we got the electron, and we got the photon. So we got the menage en dog going forth, and here we go. So you can see exactly how it goes forth and how it produced the photon and the light. Science 101, we're all taking the class again. So here we get the difference between blue light and red light, infrared light, ultraviolet light, microwave light, gamma light, x-ray light. It's all right there, folks. It's in waves. Okay, let's continue. So how many photons? Well, check this out. <laughs> A lot. And I'll just let this soak in. So here you can see the different keys, the different jewels of what you can see the light coming in. Is this not just fascinating? So let's continue. So to review the properties of a photon. A photon does not have any mass. A photon does not have any chance, uh, excuse me, any charge, and are not deflected in an electrical field or a magnetic field. So let me just continue on why we should be able to see something up there. And again, review this. The reason that it is impossible for light not to be detected is because light travels in straight lines, as we saw in this example here. A light ray leaving a star will continue on for infinity, traveling in a straight line until it hits something that absorbs that light. If there are no other objects between the star and the camera, then the camera has to absorb the light. If the camera is not overwhelmed by a much brighter light than that of the star, then it has to detect that light from the star. Folks, simple principles. Now, light does have a duality. Light can be reflected, refracted, and diffracted. Reminds me of an Arlo Guthrie song. So, we on the surface of the earth cannot see stars during the daylight only because our atmosphere scatters light from the sun. If the atmosphere were not there, we would see stars everywhere even during the day except in the vicinity of where the sun is. If we were turned slightly away from the sun, we would see stars everywhere, and a camera aimed in the same way would detect the stars as well. So, we get this from the International Space Station, but we get no stars. And that's where that came from. I don't know what that device is, but apparently they understand the laws of photons. Apparently. Here is two photon beams in a lab experiment intersecting one another. So here is the dilemma. This means that either they are shooting these pictures of a spacecraft 
in space, in a studio, or they are deliberately replacing the star background with a black background. I recall reading a prophecy that said that the stars would no longer to be recognized. They would no longer be in the place that they held their honor. It said that the stars would begin to fall from the sky and that we would not begin to recognize it. Is this what NASA is hiding? Are they hiding something coming in that is sucking the energy off of our sun like a red dwarf that has the very same properties that would do that? Is this why we're giving the line by NASA that this is an eclipse? Yeah. Don't think so, folks. There's something going on. And it's by the science that we're going to learn what's going on and break this puzzle because it is a puzzle. All right, you folks take good care of yourselves.